Welcome to Gowan Consulting's self-care and ergonomics presentation. A few minutes with us and we can help you feel productive, full of energy, and have less discomfort throughout your workday. And that's by applying the principles of ergonomics. Ergonomics is the art and science of fitting your work, your work tools, and your workstation to your uh, capabilities and your requirements. We're all designed differently. Taller, shorter, thinner, wider, with greater reach zones. So our workstations should be able to match what our capabilities are. When we have strains, sprains, and pains, there are really four risk factors that we need to consider that may be causing this discomfort. It could be awkward postures, not using our body to its best abilities. Forces, putting greater forces through our body than we're physically able to manage. Repetition, repeating certain actions with muscles or muscle groups that cause them to become tired or fatigued. And even environmental conditions can impact how we feel. The lighting around us, the temperature, and even vibration. So let's take a look at some of the things that we need to consider if we're going to work well and comfortable and be productive during our day and into our 24-hour body day. The first principle we need to understand is that we're all connected. Our head bones connected to our neck bone, neck bones connected to our back bone, back bones connected to our hip bone, hip bones connected to our leg bone. You know, go ahead, sing along with me. But that song really reminds us that we are all connected. And when we use our body properly, we can have lots of energy lots of strength, and the capability to end our day with continued um, comfort and energy. But when we use our body improperly, we overstretch, overbend, not use our joints properly, our muscles in their strongest position, we can be tired, we can have pain, and sometimes that can lead to an inability to complete our work. The main part of our body that we want to talk about to start with is our spine. Our back or our spine is the center of our body. When we maintain a nice S-shaped curve in our back and our neck, we can create good mechanical capability to complete our job and feel comfortable. That S-shaped curve involves a curve in at the neck, out at the upper back, back in at the low back, and back out at the bottom. You may think that our body has, our back has been made to maintain this posture in a strong mechanical way. But throughout the day, we may not notice that we may stretch we may bend, we may twist, we may overreach that causes that S-shaped curve to become um, strained, straightened, or overcurved, or even twisted. And that puts strain throughout our back and our neck. One of the things we want to understand is in order to maintain proper posture, our work tools should consider what is good reach zones. So where should we be working throughout our day? The main thing that we want to do is maintain an upright posture, an S-shaped curve, and well supported in our chair or in standing. We want to not put a lot of strain through our shoulder or elbows. To do that, 
our elbows should be relaxed below the shoulders. And we should be able to hug ourselves and keep our elbows in at our sides. For most of the day, so that's your keying, your mousing, your writing, even your phone, if you're on the phone a lot throughout the day, should be within that primary reach zone. The further that we have to reach past that zone, the more strain we put on our shoulders. So if you're reaching out so that your arms are outstretched, you're in your secondary reach zone. That may be where your coffee cup is, your water, your stapler. But remember, when you reach past the end of your fingertips, your back now has to bend forward or sideways or twist to reach that area. So rarely should we be in that what we call tertiary zone or past the fingertip zone. Do you know whether your phone is on a way far away or that binder that you use? that piece of paper at the edge of the desk. Each of those stretches, each of those bends, each of those twists can cause more strain on your back and on your muscles. So keep things close. You may feel like everything is in front of you and close to you, but that's the best thing for your body. So let's take a look at how do we support our body in a proper workstation when we're working on the computer. To start off with, let's look at our base of support, our chair. Take a look at your chair. You've probably got little bells and whistles all on that chair to adjust, but how many of you really have adjusted that chair? Let's start out with making sure our feet are flat on the floor or on a footrest. We want to sit back in the chair and not perch. So when you sit back in your chair, the support from your back rest should fit in to the small of your back about your belt line. If you don't feel you have enough support there, stuffing some pantyhose with a rolled up towel and tying that to your chair can provide a really good lumbar support. Now, you want to make sure that as you sit back, that you have enough space at the edge of your chair to make sure you're not putting pressure behind your knees. That pressure can come from having a seat pan that is longer than your thighs. So if you're shorter than the average bear, you may find that you perch or you may find that you don't sit all the way back in your chair. Take a look at your chair because some chairs do have the ability to adjust that seat pan length and allow you two fingers behind the back of your knees. A lot of people don't use their armrests. One of the studies that have recently been completed tells us that being able to have armrests underneath our forearms while we're keying and typing provides good support for your shoulders and your upper back and neck. So can you adjust the armrest height and can you adjust them in to be able to allow you that support? You don't want your shoulders to be shrunk too high or have a lack of support underneath those forearms. You see in this picture that that chair and the forearms are placed equal to where the top of your desk is. The way to achieve this is to raise your chair so that those armrests that you've supported nicely under your arms can be at the same level as your keyboard and your mouse. Gently floating over your keyboard and mouse allows you to be able to work within your reach zones with upper extremity or arm support. The next thing we want to take a look at is where is your monitor? 
your monitor should be set about an arm's length away from you. Taking a look at the height of your monitor is important. For most people, the top of the monitor or the top of the screen should be at your eyebrow level so that you can look about 30 degrees down to the center of the screen. Now, if you're like me and you use bifocals or transitional lenses, your monitor should be a little bit lower and tilted slightly back so that you are looking down through the right part of your glasses. Speaking of what you're looking at, where's your paper? Most people have their paper flat on their desk. This can cause our neck to have to bend forward to look at the paper, twist and rotate, and then look at the monitor. A document holder or an inline copy holder can be a useful tool to be able to allow you to put the documents within your site without doing a lot of twisting and bending of your neck. Remember that everybody is set up differently. And there are a lot of fancy ergonomic tools that you can use. But using some paper as a footrest or a monitorizer, that that can be helpful for you to be able to get things to the right height without spending a lot of money. You can also take a look at putting a three inch binder underneath your papers so that they're tilted forward and place those between your keyboard and your monitor so that you can look down and straight at the paper. Now let's take a look at laptops. Many people use laptops, tablets, all kinds of things that cause us to be turtle shaped or looking down. In the picture that we showed you before, you could adjust things to be able to accommodate for the keyboard and the monitor height, but a laptop is all together. So take a look at this fellow here who seems to be punching forward to use his laptop. What can we do to help him? Well, if he sits back and we get a separate keyboard and a separate mouse and raise the monitor. Now this shows a fancy monitor riser, but you can use paper as well. Get that to the right height and get the keyboard and the mouse to the correct height. And you see how he quickly sits back and his back remains in an S shape curve. And what about standing? Well, many people like to stand. And there's a big controversy over sit, stand, that sitting disease. What we're finding is it is important to move. For those of you who like to stand, make sure that your keyboard and your mouse are placed at your elbow height. Having that too low can cause you to hunch over. Having it too high can cause you to shrug your shoulders. Your monitor also wants to be at the same height as it was when you were sitting. Keep in mind that if the whole system goes up together, that there is no uh, change in where your monitor should sit on that desk. But making sure that the monitor is at eyebrow level and you're looking slightly down to that center of the screen. It is really important to understand that our body is made to move. Any static posture, too much standing, too much sitting, can increase risk of heart disease, can cause us to have difficulty with our veins or vascular risks, increases pain, fatigue, causes us to gain that weight, and reduces productivity. So your body's made to move. How often should you get up? How often should you move? Well, it really depends on you, but we usually recommend that every 45 minutes, getting up, doing a stretch, going to the bathroom, drinking more water so you have to go to the bathroom more often, the more that you can move, the more that you can walk to the printer, walk around, talk to people in your area, you're getting body movement that will help you to get away from those static postures. And of course, we want you to stretch. 
When you're working all day, your muscles get tense and tight. The more that you can get up, rotate those shoulders back, stretch, shrug your shoulders, and do some of the stretches that we've given you in your handout or here on the picture. That will help you to keep that blood flow going through your muscles and reduce the pain and strain. And of course, all of the things that we've talked about today applies at home when you're doing the dishes, when you're working on your laptop at home, using your tablet, or on Facebook or whatever that social media thing might be these days. But this is a 24-hour thing. We don't have a work body and a home body. So let's look after your body all the time. Apply these principles of self-care at home, at work, at play. Teach your family how to set things up properly. We also have to understand that there are certain things that can cause increased strain and pain in your muscles. And stress is a big factor. Look at how you manage your stress. Getting proper sleep helps you to rejuvenate those muscles and be able to start a new day fresh and repaired. Have fun with your family and teach them these principles of ergonomics that we've taught you today. And remember, if you have pain, it is a warning sign. Your body's pretty smart. In the early stages, it's important to control your activity when pain is present. Adjust your posture, stretch, stop and modify your activity. Do ergonomic adjustments. If your pain continues, get treatment. Make sure that you talk about your pain early and get the changes made quickly because ongoing pain can lead to more problems in your future. So always use pain as the warning sign and listen closely. And if you want more information, visit our website at www.gowanhealth.com. We can help you with ergoblasts, ergonomic assessments, and lots of resources for your physical and mental health and ensure that you have a safe, healthy, and productive day and consider all the things that you can do to maintain your health at work, at home, so you can enjoy your life.